So in the last video, we were looking at the idea of just you, you want to do a study where you're looking for a, a relationship between variables. So you've got two different variables like spinach and intelligence, and you're asking, is there some kind of relationship between these? And one way to do it is how we looked at before with uh, you're going to measure one variable in terms of something quantitative like IQ. And then we had the other variable as something categorical where we're sorting people into these two different groups and we're making some kind of comparison between the groups. And in the end, we're able to say, okay, yeah, there is a relationship between spinach and intelligence. And the nature of that relationship is that people who eat more spinach have higher IQs. Um, we could have done this in a different way, and it might be a much better way to do it. So let me get space, and I'll show you another way to do this. The other way to do this would be instead of making spinach a categorical variable, we could measure that in terms of an actual numerical score, an amount. So we could ask people, what is the amount, amount of spinach that they eat? And just arbitrarily I'll say that the way we're going to record that is we're going to ask them for the number of times per week okay that they eat spinach and then of course we'll also measure IQ just like before so the difference here is that in this case amount of spinach is also a numerical or quantitative variable and we'll see that it just makes it a bit different in terms of how uh, the kind of information we get and the way we would display that on a graph so very much like before, we're going to have different, uh, if we were to put this into a, a table, we would have in each row, we would have uh, a participant. So this would be number one. I'll just go ahead and put, we'll go ahead with uh, six, six participants like we had before. And so this may look very similar to what we had before, but in this case, uh, we're measuring uh, both variables in each individual and in terms of having an actual quantitative score on both of them for each person. So we would go up to participant number one, ask them how many, many times a week do you eat spinach? And they would say, I guess it would be two times a week that I eat spinach. And then we give them an IQ test and we find out their IQ is 103. And then I'll just put in some other random well, sort of random numbers. I'm going to do these off the top of my head, but I am intentionally trying to make a relationship, a pattern here. So let's put, make this person 120, 130. Uh, this one will be a 106. Uh, let's see, one, 115 and 110. Now, again, this may look similar to what we did before, but having both variables be quantitative uh, makes us uh, quite a bit of a difference. So instead of comparing between two different groups, what we're doing is we're measuring uh, both variables in a single individual, and then we're just saying what is what is the trend across all these individuals. And the way we would we could try to look at that in terms of the table and just say, well, if people get, you know say they don't eat much spinach, so number two and zero, they seem to have pretty low IQs. You know, so we might be able to visually figure something out just looking at the table, but it's much easier to see a pattern, to see a relationship if we graph it. And the type of graph that you would want to create for data like this would not be in this case a bar chart like we did before where one of our variables was categorical, but in this case we would want to create a scatter plot. So our scatter plot would have, we would have spinach down here in this case, the amount of spinach they eat, and we would have IQ over here. And uh, let's say for spinach, uh, we're going to say people range from having spinach uh, zero times a week up to seven. We don't want to go, you know, make this number way larger than what uh, what we have data for, uh, because then the graph would be huge, and our data on it would only take up a small part of the graph. So on IQ, our uh, our lowest IQ is 103 over here. So we could make this axis start at 100 rather than having it start at zero. Uh, and then let's have it go up to, well, our highest score is 130. I'm going to put this at 140 and then see if I can divide this into about four chunks. Okay, so we've got our, our axes labeled and we've got, uh, now we can start actually uh, putting 
some of these data points on here. And hopefully you've done this in an algebra class, and so you're going, wow, Abe, I, I, this is way too easy. I know all this already. But you know, I'm trying to take you through all the steps that if, you know, from saying, what am I going to measure in terms of my variables? And how, how, what kind of data table am I actually going to get from this? What's it going to look like? And then with that kind of data, you know, based on how I measured the variables, whether they were categorical or quantitative, what is what is the uh, graph of that data going to look like? And what kinds of information am I going to get from it? So if we were to graph this, how this would work is, let me grab a different color. We would just pick a participant. We start with number one and we say, okay, well, they got a score of two in terms of how much spinach they eat per week. So on this axis, that is where they're at. And they got an IQ of 103. So on this axis, they're just about here, very low. And then we would find the point at which these two things intersect. And we would put that point on the graph. And that point, each point on a scatter plot in this case, represents an individual participant. So this is participant number one, and it represents the both of the scores that they got. And this is just turns out is a, a very nice way of being able to visualize the information so that you can look for patterns or relationships in it that might not be so obvious from just a table of numbers. So let's go ahead and fill in the rest of these. So participant number two has a score of four on spinach and four on spinach and 120 on IQ. So they're up here. So again, we find the place where those the point where those two scores intersect, which is right here. I'll go ahead and fill the rest of these out. Okay, so I've uh, gone ahead and put all of our data points on the graph, and uh, and I put them in red so that they stand out a little bit more. It's a little easier to see, and uh, you should notice like there's there's a there's a pattern here. There's a relationship. It looks like in general, people who eat more spinach are smarter. You know, we've got this person over here who, who eats uh, spinach seven times a day, and they have an IQ of 130. And so they're, they're right here. Uh, this person eats no spinach, and their IQ is a lot smaller. And that seems to be a general trend. Now, it's not going to be perfectly consistent. It's almost never perfectly consistent when you see something like this. Uh, for example, let's see, this person... Uh, this person eats spinach six times a day, uh, but their IQ is still lower than this person who eats spinach only four times a day. So it may not be a, a totally consistent relationship, but there's definitely, you can see right away from doing the scatter plot that there, there is a relationship there and it's easy to visualize. So one of the nice things about doing it this way, as opposed to before where we were doing a categorical variable and we were just comparing between two groups, you know, that left out a lot of detail. Uh, we just had a bar chart where we said this group, you know, is more intelligent than that group. In this case, we can sort of see the underlying shape of the data. So for example, here we can see that it, it, it approximates a line that looks something like, whoops, looks something like this. And that means we could do some interesting things. We could, for example, if we went out and asked someone, how many times a week do you eat spinach? And they said three times. We can guess based on this, uh, the shape of the relationship here that we can see, the, the, uh, the fact that it approximates this line, we can use that to predict uh, that, they will, that they will have an intelligence somewhere about here. So a little over 110. So... Uh, being able to see that's really nice. Uh, we could also see things like, let's say that, you know, let's say we got a bunch more data and most of it is doing this. It's it's really falling very close to that line. We're getting a nice, consistent relationship here, which is very unlikely, honestly. But let's say that we're getting that. But then maybe we get a few people for bizarre reasons that are really... Uh, not fitting that pattern. Like we get someone who eats spinach all the time, but they score really low on intelligence, so they're down there. If we just calculated an average, this point right, right here, this point, this point would very much drag the average intelligence down uh, of the people who eat spinach. 
Um, but in this case, we might say, wow, that, that person seems to just not fit the gen general trend. We might look into it a little bit. Maybe we find out that they are actually very intelligent, but that they just get nervous taking tests. Uh, in that case, we would classify this as something called an outlier. And we won't, don't need to get into that in any detail right now, but the point is that a scatter plot gives you that detail about the data visually uh, that really allows you to see what is going on in a way that a bar chart does not.